Really enjoyed the hangout yesterday. Uh, kudos to Pyro. Really good moderator, actually, especially when you've got rambunctious people in there like me. Uh, that I, I'm always telling people that what you see in my normal videos is kind of not really me. It's kind of a YouTube persona that I <clears throat> use just to sort of, I don't know, cut through the irrele irrelevancies, or I, as I see them. Uh, but my real personality kind of, kind of comes out a little bit more forceful in uh, in the uh, hangouts, and I think everybody sees that, and uh, so they they cut me a lot of slack. <laughs> and I must say, I was cut an awful lot of slack yesterday, and I appreciate that from everybody. I get pretty animated when I really am passionate, not even passionate, but really enthusiastic about something. Um, and you know, that's you forget yourself sometimes in circumstances like that, and you get abrasive. I apologize then, I apologize now. I hope I haven't driven anybody crazy, but I suspect that pe I just rather amused everybody, which is good. I can handle that. <laughs> um, but um, <clears throat> on a more uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, relevant note to the discussion, um, I want to make something clear. And I, I don't really mind if I have to say this a million times. It doesn't bother me. I'm maddeningly persistent, if nothing else. Um, stubborn, if you want to call it that, pig-headed, whatever. Um, guilt, that came up, and everybody went, oh boy, <laughs> sit back, get your popcorn, and he's going to go berserk, and of course I did, but it was fun. I enjoyed it, I just hope everybody else got a good laugh out of it. Um, well, what is guilt? That was the nail I was hammering home. What is it? I'm not saying that we abolish it. I'm not saying that we... Uh, that it's evil or anything like that. All I'm trying to say is, let's not kid ourselves as to what it is. That's all. Um, it's negative motivation. It is a whip. It is not a carrot. <laughs> um, it, and it can be used aggressively and offensively and sadistically. Um... And it, you know the video that I made the other day. What what do you make of um, somebody who's in what you would call near psychotic depression versus somebody being brutally tortured with knives and hot pokers and stuff like that? Who is suffering more? <laughs> that kind of seems to be the crux of it. I would say that the person who's got enormous internal conflict. Could be suffering just as severely as the person who's being brutally physically tortured, and they may even actually be suffering more. That seems to be where the discussion gets derailed, because I don't think we moderns are used to that kind of challenge. Um, oh, what's a bit of guilt? What's that going to do to him? Okay, it's like the same thing about what's it? What's a spank on the bum? That's not going to traumatize a child. But what what do we feel now as a society about corporal punishment of children? You know, you say a smack on the rear end, that won't kill him, but people think about, okay, wh where does that smack on the rear end go? Where does guilt go? Especially when you have a weak person who has little resistance to the schadenfreude that we all feel, the in, in, in sort of innate sadism that we all have. Ooh, that guilt worked! Wow! That's power, and I like that feeling. Um, you know, Woody Allen, Franz Kafka, James Joyce, uh, all that kind of thing, talking about guilt. Even the songs of the Pogues, you know, they allude to that kind of thing. Um, no, I'm not saying guilt is bad, or guilt is evil, or guilt is, you know, any value on it at all, if you don't, you know, if, if you want to sort of push me to that point. Um... But let's not kid ourselves as to what it is. When you use guilt, you are using coercion. You are inflicting suffering. You are committing an act of violence. Um, now, what, what came up in the discussion was the idea of, well... You know, showing somebody the contents or the, the, what goes on in an abattoir, that's not really horrible. You're just, here, this is what this is. 
you know, this is why I'm a vegetarian. I'm simply showing you what it is. Okay? What do you think about those people that carry placards of aborted fetuses in front of the women's hospitals? You know, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It's somebody who knows that they're right, applying coercive force and inflicting suffering in the name of the better good. But they know, they know, that they're in the right before they actually apply that uh, lash of coercive suffering. They know that they're in the right. They know. <laughs> uh, was that line from um, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence? about the Australian guy in the Japanese prisoner of war camp who uh, has faced the man who has been torturing him in the camp for years. Um, he says, um, back when I was in the camp and you were beating me, um, you thought you were right. In the Japanese way of things, prisoners deserve no respect. Um, in fact, you, in your view of things, you were treating us with humanity because, you know, by the, in the Japanese scheme of things, we should have just fought to the death and just feeding you is an act of extreme compassion, even if we're starving you. That's the Japanese way. The, the, this was implied in the movie. I'm not saying that that's what it is. Now, afterwards, the Japanese captor is now a prisoner of war and on, tri on trial and I think condemned to death for war crimes for the way he behaved while a sergeant in a prisoner of war camp. And these, the Japanese um, officer, or the Japanese sergeant said, I don't really mind dying. I understand that that's a soldier's potential fate. What I don't understand is the condemnation. Like, what did I do that was so bad? You know, why, why am I passing such moral judgment on everybody? Or wh why, why is everyone rather passing moral judgment on me? by my scheme of things, I was a pretty humane guy. Okay, I beat you up every second day, brutally, but, you know, let's face it, you were a prisoner. You surrendered. You, you abdicated all your honor. I was being nice. I didn't kill you right then and there. And that's kind of the, the moral dilemma of the entire movie. That's inherent even in the title, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Um, again, the, uh, the Australian guy, actually, I think he was British, he said, um, yes, um, when I was in the camp, I was a victim of a man who thought he was right, who believed he was right. And now the situation is reversed and we're going to execute you and we're going to condemn you morally. You are now a victim of men who believe or who know that they are right. Um, I'm right, therefore I get to apply coercive suffering upon you. Um, it's not the actual guilt itself that I have um, issues with. It's the moral rectitude that goes along with it and the moral rectitude that can actually corrupt the person who is applying the guilt. Um, okay, I'm in the right, so I'm going to coerce you with guilt. But something in me enjoys that. I go, oh, that was a rush, that little bit of power. Again, that's the dark side, and it likes that. Um... So the person gets kind of, I want more of that. I want more of that power. I want more of that schadenfreude, you know, the little sadistic, you know, one half of one tenth of a percent uh, in you wants it. And it starts to scream rather loudly to do it again. I want more of that power. I want more of that, that rush of messing with people's minds and getting them to do what I want. Um... If you ever read the On the Genealogy of Morals by Nietzsche, you'll see that's essentially what that entire novel, I think, boils down to. Let's face it, we're all dark. Or, we're not, not we're all dark, but we all have that in us, even in tiny amounts. It's there. And if we deny it, then it gets to do whatever it wants, and we'll ignore it when it takes control of us, because we say, we're in the right, we're good people, we don't do things like that. I don't have a dark side, I don't have an evil side. Okay, wait till you start inflicting suffering on other people for the right reasons, according to your scheme of things. For the right reasons. You believe that you're in the right. You have the right to inflict suffering on this person. You're not... Uh, your belief in your own rectitude actually makes you weak. 
uh, it makes you weak to the inroads of the dark side. Because the dark side will keep telling you, yeah, keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. It's, it's good, yeah. And, of course, you've told yourself that you're doing this for the right reasons. But you're getting a real rush out of this. And you're getting addicted to the power and to the uh, schadenfreude that comes from just snapping your fingers or a couple of little words and you reduce somebody to their, you know, you bring them to their knees with shame and, and inner conflict. I'm not saying that we have to abolish guilt as a society. Um, I think that Ed Endem has essentially abolished it because he's pushed it to insane lengths. What I'm saying is, and I'll say it again a million times, let's not kid ourselves as to what it is. Um, if you decide that you're going to use guilt to stop physical violence, you're just playing a shell game. You're just replacing one type of violence and suffering for another. And you may simply be, without wanting to even face that possibility, um, feeding your own inner demon with, with the sadism and the, the schadenfreude that it wants. Um, that's the horrible thing about being morally in the right. Somebody has to be morally in the wrong. So, um, again, that leaves us at... You know, the final point of departure, I guess, is, okay, so let's say then that we do, we're, we're trying as a society to remove violence from our society, okay, and coercion and, 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 and deliberately inflicted suffering, okay. Now, if we take your view, Andy, on a kind of odd, that, that mind games that are mentally coercive are just as bad as violence, then civilization has no tools left to prevent itself from degenerating into barbarism. For the millionth time, I'm not saying that we dispense with guilt. I'm not saying that we get rid of it. I'm not even sure that we should maintain this sort of fanatical opposition to corporal punishment. Because I don't really see that it's worse um, than guilt. Or that guilt is worse than that the inner conflict that comes from mind games and mental coercion. Um, I'd rather go the other way. I would say if we're going to allow the, the kind of horrific guilting that a lot of people seem to think is necessary for civilization, we're really no better as a society than Saudi Arabia, who go immediately for the brutal physical punishment the second that there's any kind of transgression of society's rules. They punish the body. We punish, lacerate, and destroy the mind. Um, they're both just as violent. That's all I'm saying. Um, you're assuming that I'm sort of saying that, no, no, we've, now that we've gotten rid of physical violence, we've, which is a bad thing, we now have to get rid of the mental violence, and now society has no more enforcement tools. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, know what you're doing when you use these tools, when you deliberately create inner conflict, inner turmoil, inner chaos. Um, know thyself. Know what you're doing both to the perpetrator of whatever crime and uh, what you're doing to yourself. Um, understand the corrupting influence of power and schadenfreude. Understand what you're doing. It's, it boils down essentially to my usual ob uh, objection to anti-Semitism. Why am I against anti-Semitism? Well, first of all, it's not very good if you're Jewish. <laughs> it's not a nice thing. Secondly, it rots the soul of the person who is the anti-Semite. They have found someone to blame for everything. And they have substituted um, actual justice for scapegoating. Um, singling somebody out and saying they're to blame for things doesn't just make life bloody uncomfortable for the scapegoat. 
it rots the the anti-Semite out from the inside. It totally skews his view of reality. It's all very well to otherize people and say, you're the cause of all these problems, but that's just overlooking the fact that you may just be an anti-Semite because you like kicking people in the face, and there's your excuse. Um, I think that a lot of Jewish people see it that way. <laughs> you don't really hate me because I'm Jewish. I'm just a legitimate target. Um, I believe that that's the same thing. Now, I know this is that that's going to infuriate a lot of people, and I don't really care. Go ahead and, and you know... Um, respond with anger against that. But again, getting angry at me doesn't actually solve anything. You're going to have to actually come up with an actual argument. And I will go d as far down any rabbit hole as anyone wants to go. <laughs> again, thank you, Pyro. That was awesome. And again, thanks to everybody else that was there for tolerating me. <laughs> I know how irritating I am. Believe me, I know. 